All right, so today I wanna to discuss what I believe are the top three non-passive hydroponic garden setups. So let's dive right in. So first of all, this video is based on my experience, my research, and my observations. So if you have had a different experience, if you think maybe there's something I missed, or if you just have a different opinion, please go down to the comments below and let me know. It's how I grow. So coming in at number three, what I believe is actually the easiest to maintain and to put together is the tried and true deep water culture, or DWC. Really all you need to make this work is like a five gallon bucket, something that can hold your nutrient water, an air stone, just one of those net baskets to hold your plant on top. The idea behind it is that this, the roots are suspended in the nutrient rich water the entire time and the air is delivered to the roots through the air stone. So what if instead of suspending the roots in water and delivering air, we suspend the roots in air and deliver water? And that leads me to my next grow setup, and it might not be what you think. So what made it in at number two on my list of hydroponic gardens is the old hydroponic drip setup. Now the idea behind this is that we're suspending the roots in air and we're delivering the nutrient-rich water to the roots through droplets of water. The most common use for this is the tower garden. So the concept behind a tower garden is that uh, the water is pumped up from the reservoir and then there are plates on each story where the water is collected and then drips down onto the roots. But the huge benefit behind doing the drip system and a tower garden in particular, and not all tower gardens have to be hydroponic drip setups, obviously. I have a fog ponic tower garden that I built in the bathroom of the RV. So it's just the easiest to do with the drip. It's very reliable and it's very simple. And the huge benefit is going to be that you can grow a lot of food or whatever it is you're trying to grow in a small amount of space. For example, I have a, a 20 plant tower garden um, in the back of the RV and then I have a 9 plant and a, f and a 17 plant in the bathroom area. So that's 26 in the bathroom and 20 out there. And I know that that's only collectively about 18 square feet. Um, and that's a pretty good amount of plants to have in just 18 square feet. I would never be able to do that unless they were grown vertically and had water trickling down them. It's reliable, it's effective, it's a good way to go, it's tried and true, it's easy to set up a drip system. All you're gonna need is like a five gallon bucket, a PVC pipe, and a pump. All right, so now we made it to number one. I guess it's probably no surprise, but I think the number one best way to grow things hydroponically is through aeroponics. And there are three different types of aeroponic gardens. There's the HPA, or a high pressure aeroponics. There's LPA, or low pressure aeroponics. This can be done wrong a lot and just become a drip system pretty easily, but it's cool if it's done properly. And then there's fog ponics at the bottom. I'm planning to do a high pressure aeroponics setup in my cannabis closet for my air juana. But currently the only gardens that I've built that are truly aeroponic uh, are my, my two fog gardens. I have my fog tower and then my fog bed is what I'm calling it now because I don't have any herbs in it. So so they all require reservoirs for nuchies, reservoir for your roots or a pipe, ultrasonic fogger, five volt fan, and lots of patience and tenacity. <laughs> so I'm super excited to be exploring with HBA setup soon, but I'm also going to be doing a fog panic microgreen setup this week. So I'm really excited about that. So those are my top three hydroponic grow methods. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought or if there's anything that I missed. Um, I'm gonna get back to the garden and get my hands dirty. I'll see you in the next video.